Welcome to Conversations with Cubit. Tonight is going to be very cool for me, and I think you're going to enjoy this conversation as well. I am super excited about this conversation, as, as I always am. But before we get started, I want to thank you for supporting these weekly conversations. You have, we've been doing these weekly conversations for a while now, and honestly, we would not continue doing them if the support was not as strong as it is. We thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, I really need you to do me a big favor. I need you to share this conversation. It's very simple, but it's a powerful thing for you to do. Just right now, just click the share button. Just click it and let your community know that this live conversation is happening right now. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Now, there's only three reasons, three simple goals I have for having these conversations. Is one is to add value to people in my community. Two, I want to inspire you to believe in what people and community can become when we're willing to work together. And three is very simple, just love people, period. All that means is I want you to be inspired and I want you to get useful information and resources. And I wanna celebrate individuals, groups, and organizations who are making a positive impact on this community. So every conversation that we will have here on Conversations with Cubit will be about information, inspiration, and hope. And today is a pretty special day for me because I am just honored to have the opportunity to highlight these amazing folks and some of their recent work here in Oklahoma City. If you've been keeping up with my weekly conversations at all, then you have seen me broadcast from my kitchen counter, you've seen me broadcast from my living room, my little home office, and then some really cool spots from around Oklahoma City. But our home has been right here at Green Pasture Studios. Green Pasture Studios sits on a 12-acre campus located in the eastern part of Oklahoma County. Uh, Oklahoma, not Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, downtown near Spencer, Oklahoma. Uh, it used to be Green Pastures Elementary, if you will remember, some of you will remember. But currently, it is a space that includes 5,500 square foot soundstage with 27 foot high ceilings, a 3,000 foot soundstage and green screen. There's so much more to this story that I firmly believe adds great value to our community. We had them on before to talk about their plans for this place, but here tonight, to tell me and you about their most recent project is my friend Richards and Amy James. Now, Richard is an entertainment entrepreneur, film producer, and author who has made a name for himself building celebrity brands and exploring the pursuit of passion, purpose, and authenticity. He is the chairman of OFTA, one of America's leading film and TV training programs located where? Right here in Oklahoma. Amy, his wife, is an Emmy award-winning documentary series editor and an award-winning featured documentary producer. Her work includes names like Dr. Maya Angelou and HBO. Amy runs the Oklahoma Film and Television Academy, which, actively, uh, which is actively training a workforce for the state of Oklahoma. She loves storytelling and uses her storytelling skills to create content for brands, studios, celebrities in the digital space. Amy serves on the board as the board chairman for Generation Citizens Promoting Civics in Oklahoma Schools. I could go on and on and on about the credentials of these two co-owners of Green Pasture Studios, but let's just stop right here so we can talk about this new feature film that was shot right here in Oklahoma City called Cricket. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, Richard and Amy James. Ta-da! I've, I've had you back to your place. <laughs> We're so happy to be here. This is amazing. Thank you so much for having us. This is, thank you for having me. I got to say this for the world. I know I say it every show, but you guys opening the doors and letting us in this massive place with a lot of serious things going on all the time. We just kind of creep around the back. We don't get everybody, nobody bothers us. We, we try not to bother them. I think we broke your air condition, but that's no, okay. That was not you. <laughs> that was not I, you. I, I think we made it, made it through it. But yeah. so thank you so much for believing in what this show could become and believing in me and giving me an opportunity to interview some fascinating people from right here. So I appreciate it. Our absolute pleasure. This is why we built this space. I mean, I would say wholeheartedly is for the community to come and tell stories. And that's, you know. Oh, we've had some fascinating stories. We've had candidates in here. I know. We've had, we got more candidates to I come. I should have had a wall where everybody comes in and they sign. We should oh, have them do that. We gosh, should have well, them do we'll that. We've had some really. 
Richard, you, you and I can be the first to sign it. There we go, done. And it, <laughs> and it increases the credibility when I say, where are we going to film? We're filming from the studio. Mm. I like it. Our studio. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it studio. does it good. We'll meet you at the studio. Explain where we're at. Are we in your living room or what's we going are. on here? We are in one of our living rooms. This <laughs> okay, one of many. We should be our house with the amount of time we spend here. Um, but this is the set of the film Cricket. And this, in fact, is Cricket's house, her living room, where you will see she is also a chef in the film. You will see her cook. You'll see her clean, you'll see her fabulous performance, and um, this is her house. But actually, whilst we say we're in Cricket's house, we're actually in the soundstage. The uh, soundstage, so right, 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 right. If, if you see, I don't know whether the you can see. The magic is just I left know, the room. I know, I know, I So uh, above ours here, there, there is a little ceiling just behind that a lot of people can see, but I don't know whether you've got an angle here, but also, all of this is open to about 27 foot above us where we can put lights in. Uh, hang outside, people from there? We can hang Swing all people. sorts of stuff up there. The, uh, the windows here uh, go out to uh, just blackness. And so what we do when we're filming is we'll put up big day blue rags and we'll pump a load of light in that. And then we'll perhaps go and cut down a tree branch from outside or if there's been a storm, oh, we'll yeah. just pull it in and put it out there and have someone just gently move Shake that. It. And then when you actually watch the movie, you'll see a lot of cars pass through here. And you'll see where the way that the sunlight hits that reflection of that window, and it just passes a glance of that, that reflection of the window through the apartment. So we have people sitting out there with little mirrors, just turning them, casting that across, and then the sound, fantastic sound, guys and girls will put that sound on to give this real impression that this is a real apartment. Lies, lies, lies. Richard, just tricks lies. us. Just like, oh. so, so this reminds me, my dad tells this story all the time. I don't know if he's telling it accurate, but you know, I was there, but he tells it all the time. We went to Universal Studios yeah. when, when I was a kid and we're on the tour and yeah. we're, and we're going through the Best tour ever. and I, we're going down the street and I recognize it. That is Beaver's house. I recognize <gasps> it. And as they turn the corner, there's nothing in the back of it. It was just a prop. I was so disappointed. So what you're doing right here is you're disappointing some kids yeah, somewhere, some kids right? You're faking them out. They believe this is true. Movie, yeah, but you know yeah. what? Here's what's going to happen. They're going to be disappointed from them because they love film so much. And then they're going to realize <laughs> I could be a part of this. I could be a part of, I mean, this was a team of 10 people that made this over the course of yeah. uh, a month. Um, and when you look at the amount of carpenters, the amount of set decorators, I mean, I don't know whether you can see it here, but the wall over there has got some paint on, as if the family had just practiced to see what color paint they might do that wall. Mm. All of these little bits go into making a film, and so those people who get enormously excited, if we caught you early enough, although you're <laughs> well, he is. Look where he's stuff. sitting right now. He's sitting okay. in his studio. The, exactly. On camera. I mean, he's he's those in it. You the, did it. That's part of the community that then can come and get these great, high-paying jobs. You look at Scenics on on Tulsa King. It's 30, 33 bucks an hour starting. Yeah. Um, and so they're good quality jobs. And so hopefully, whilst we may shatter a little bit of someone's sort of illusion of how we make movies, they might think. I can do that. I want to trick somebody. I want to be a musician as well. Oh, yes. right. I want to pull a magic a rabbit out of a hat. Yeah, yes, very that's what right. happened. So that's what that's what you did. I got to see uh, behind the scenes a little bit. Yes, you did uh, with this movie. Maybe maybe I'll tell a little bit. I don't know. I may I, have been. I, I might be on the cutting room floor. I don't no, know. You're in but, uh, it. Yeah, you're definitely but, in it. You made it. <laughs> no, I don't know. You did. So you probably should have cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> but here, so tell me a little bit about. Well, first I want you to talk about mm -hmm. the movie star sure. that's in it. And I think we have a clip that mm -hmm. you want to set up. So talk about the, the, sure. the movie star and then set up the little clip that we have to show sure. everybody. A tiny bit of history I'll give you just so you can understand how important and unique and fabulous Sky Dakota Turner is. I found this script in 2004 when I was an executive at Paramount and I fell in love with it. Fell head over heels, read it for the first time and was like, I have to make this. We, I, I shopped it around for six years in Hollywood and never, no bites. People were like, one of the best scripts I've ever read, but we're not gonna do it, we're not gonna do it. So little did I know, I turned it up and I gave it to um, a gentleman named Arnold Rifkin. I didn't give it to him, the writer gave it to Arnold Rifkin. Um, a very high power, um, was a ex-president of William Morris, you know, big Bruce Willis's producing partner. Correct. So he had it, so even, there's a little Amy Janes, you know, trying to sell a movie, very, prestigious producer got his hands on it and nobody, nobody bit. So um, this past summer, last summer, I had, um, I just went up to Richard, I'm like, look, I know we can do this, please, mm. please. 
one of the things that had prevented us from so long from me ever putting it together is there was nobody who could play. Nobody fit cricket. Mm. No actor, no, nobody that any studio was like, that's her, that's, like, I, I see that. Nobody fit cricket. Within two weeks of us green lighting, Melody Garneau, our business partner, walks in and she's like, I saw this girl on a video and I think she's really great. She's a local in Dallas. She's singing this amazing piece um, in her church. And I was like, that's cricket. That's cricket. That's cricket. And it like, it's gonna make me cry now. So, um, so it turns out cricket, Sky Dakota Turner, watch that name, is um, she was the young Aretha Franklin in the movie Respect. Mm -hmm. And she is closing right now as the young Tina Turner on Broadway. Now, I'm excited for you to see this clip, but I also want you to understand that she had never sung classical in her life. 13-year-old mm. young lady who has obviously a God-given talent had never sung classical, and we were gonna ask her to sing a requiem, which is a very hard piece of music. So, um, we have very talented people in Oklahoma, and we came across a singing coach named Deanna Marie. And Deanna Marie spent three weeks with her, I guess, before we started really going into rehearsals. And this, what you're about to see, is the recording of the actual soundtrack that we will be using in the film. It is Sky Dakota Turner. It is the um, Z Dr. Zelensky's Singers, which is out of Norman, there it's a choir. And it's the Oklahoma City Philharmonic, all shot in the contemporary art, um, art building That's good. there. All right, guys, run that, run that one minute clip. Let us know when we're back. Yes, that is cool. Now I got a little story. I don't know if you know this uh, about uh, Sky and I. <gasps> no. Oh, of course I do. Yes, you met Miss Turner. I did meet. I did meet Miss Turner. Mm -hmm. But here's the deal. So uh, you all set me up to play some part, mm -hmm. a police officer part. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I don't know anything. I don't know what I'm doing. You did great. I'm just showing up. At a, you, at a, you were at playing a time. the policeman. You know exactly. Yeah, what but I don't know what. What that I'm, entails, I'm, right? I'm, yeah. yeah, I don't. I don't know what what the job <laughs> yeah, is. Sure. What I'm doing. Yeah. I'm showing up, yeah. and you got all of these. I mean, it's just so much going on. And after they get me suited in in, in my uniform, and I sit down, and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, I'm waiting, because I think that's what. Welcome to you, the life I think that's what you do set. with film set. Yes. It's just waiting around. Uh, so I'm I'm doing some work on my phone, and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and it's this little girl just sitting there and she's getting her hair combed and she's talking and she's messing around, everything. And I think she's really, really small and really, really young mm -hmm. for this, all these adults and stuff. And there's nothing going on. And I see somebody come over and uh, ask her if she wanted to do homework. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what is, she, what is going on? So she comes over, she sits at the same table with me and we're sitting there and she opens up a book and she, then she says, she's, well, we'll do it later. And I said, so what's your story? I don't know who she is. <gasps> Right, of course. You I don't know, know who she know is. Nothing about what I don't know I who she is. And I go, what's your story? She says, what do you mean? I said, tell me your story. And she says, you want to know my whole story? I said, yeah. And she started in New York, and she was singing, and she was doing all that. I was like, wait a minute, who are you? And then she got called to go stay, and everything rushed <laughs> off, and I'm like, that's the star <laughs> of the show? I've been sitting here for the last 30 minutes having a conversation with the star of the show. <laughs> yeah, so, oh, yes, and then I'm out there, and I'm arresting her, and yeah. doing all this other yeah. stuff, and, yeah. and this stuff, and, it, and so it was amazing to watch how professional she went from kid, sitting at the table to me, to complete rock star, and a total different person, mm -hmm. 
when we were out there filming, and and there was another gentleman too that was in the scene. But His name I was is like, Folly. Yeah. Folly. Oh, they they were they knocked my my socks off on how they can. Yeah. Folly become. is an incredible actor too. Yeah. He's watched yeah. it. Folly. Right, I never can say his last name, but um, amazing, amazing actor too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, tell me mm -hmm. a little bit about the film. Sure. I don't even know what the film. I I, I did this little bit, oh, so I don't even okay. know. What it's film. all about a policeman who. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> oh, right. No. Um, so, like I said, I found this film many, 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 many years ago, and um, it's really the story of a little girl who is trying to find the courage to, to to follow her dream, follow her passion, follow what she loves. But life has some turns and twists and her mother becomes ill and now she is really trying to figure out who she is as a human, in, a human being. What's really fun is that she, by chance, meets somebody who turns her life around and by turning her life around, helps her recognize that her voice, her natural, her singing voice, obviously it's music mm -hmm. going to be in there, yeah. um, her, that her voice is what's going to help her, her passion and her voice is what's gonna help her get through the, um, I mean, the loss of a mother. I mean, how do you, and so it is, you know, really a film that's dedicated to all of the mothers and all of the survivors that have left, uh, you know, left behind without them. And so it's deep. So it's, it's deep. It is deep. It's deep. It's sweet. It's so hopeful, and um, and I think so many of us deal with loss that we don't even know how to deal with it. And through that little girl, I mean, was able to crank into that idea, and became this this powerhouse that that I hope will have an effect, a real positive effect on people who are grieving themselves. Yeah, Richard, I know that Amy probably had a little bit to do with why you chose this movie, but why this movie out of all the, the other ones? That's a great question. That's a really good question. Um, our very first date, <laughs> we're married, just so that everyone's clear on that. <laughs> yeah. uh, our very first date, we spoke about two things. One was building this thing called Filmmaker's Ranch, where we could make movies away from Hollywood, and here we are today. And the other one was Amy spoke about this script that she found. Mm. And so I knew, always knew that this was Amy's absolute passion project. And I'd always loved the script, but it had never spoken to me in a way where I was said, Amy, I have to direct this. I loved it, but as a director, you have to be very, very careful about what you attach yourself to because mm -hmm. it becomes all consuming. Well, fast forward, I'm then going through this journey where now I have children and I go through a major health crisis mm -hmm. and I end up in hospital and I have them coming in going, do you have a will? You don't have a will, well let's complete the will. If something happens, who's gonna turn off, who's gonna have permission to turn off the life support machine? And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, I, this is, I am too young to die and my kids are too young for me to go, yeah, I still have stuff to do. Mm -hmm. And in that moment I thought about the script that Amy has been in love with for so long. And it just broke my heart in terms of the journey that this family went through. And suddenly so much made sense to me. And I felt that in part we had to find cricket, but also Absolutely. in part I had to go through my own trials and tribulations to truly connect in the heart with what this film is about because I've gone up to that line. Now, thankfully I came back in this story, um, you know, it, it you'll have to come and see. Yes. Oh, I shouldn't ruin it. No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Cliffhanger. It, yeah. <laughs> it spoke to me in such an enormous way, um, and I was really excited then to to take that story and set it here in Oklahoma, because there's so much to play with here, so much to play with, and so much great talent both behind the camera and then in front of the camera that we can involve in in the project. So we shot it over 24 days, which was. Mm -hmm. A bit of a nightmare. We had two days that were three snow days. Three snow days, um, which means you have to shut everything down. The, the business shuts. Our big scene then, at the end. So those pages need to fit in a different day. You have to be able to push. Talking about the three versions, I'll tell you about. Mm. Our big scene at the end. We have. Uh, we have. Um, I shouldn't tell you what exactly yeah. happens at the end, but ultimately there was thunder and lightning. And when you have thunder and lightning, you can't shoot inside. But for me, everything- You can't shoot outside, and our major right. lights were outside. We had, how you would know what, how big they were. There were massive lights coming through this beautiful church, mm. gorgeous. And our gaffer's like, mm, 
Lightning's 10 miles away, shut it down, and you have your last shot and you can't get it. It's oh, like, no. yeah. But for me, what I saw in the story was ultimately that in order to process grief, you have to put an authentic voice to it. You have to feel it. And that was something that I had experienced in terms of where I'd gone, I'd had major surgery, um, and I realized that the grief that I was holding, the only way to deal with that without it rotting my insides was to start to put an authentic voice to it. And one of the ways that I put an authentic voice to things is I make films mm. and I explore it through that. So this was a beautiful opportunity. I'm an, and I'm enormously blessed that you, that Arnold and that Duffy and Wendy trusted then me with this fantastically beautiful story. Mm -hmm. And it really is, it's raw, it's true, and it really gets to the heart of what this family goes through. Yeah, now, I, I cannot wait now that you describe it that way because uh, the scene that, that I was involved with, mm -hmm. and I'm just talking, and I, and I shouldn't, and I like to, it was all business. Yeah. So when you said, let's go, everything stopped. And I was like, well, I wasn't finished with my conversation. I was trying to, <laughs> yeah, I was in the middle of a sentence there. Yeah, yeah. But in those brief little yeah. in between chat times, uh, uh, the actor was telling me that he had just got through doing some really emotional scenes. And now he was doing this other dynamic of emotion, the scene. And I was like, you can just turn it on and turn. He says, yeah, I cried. I don't know how many times in a row. Like, you can just do that. He does it amazing too he goes so deep for such a young oh age. It's, it was crazy I think a lot of actors when they say they can just do that i think actually uh he didn't say he could just do it i said he could just ah, do right. it right yeah because the work that a lot of these actors were doing we brought in a phenomenal acting coach guy called guy camilleri who was working with them on backstory whilst then i start going through on mm. the script with them the amount of work that they had to do and our, our leading act our, our, our second leading actress um blythe had a very personal connection. Blythe Howard, she's amazing. She's mm. phenomenal, and she had such a personal connection to this story, um, which her I won't. Her sister, I think she wouldn't mind sharing. Her sister rang the bell three months prior, mm. Mm -hmm. and so she came the to the table. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there she is now playing this part that her sister had lived, gone through, and she lived with her through it. They, they're like they the whole t time together. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It was rather beautiful, and the the depth that the cast went to. As a director, you're just so blessed when you see the actors willing to go there and be that vulnerable. So tell me, when when, when do we get to see it? When do we? When do, what's the? Well, what's the sketch here? Well, there. Thank you for asking, because actually, um, tomorrow night we are holding a screening at the Paramount. Um, I don't remember what they call it now. It's the screening room in the Paramount yeah. building at seven o'clock. Um, there is an Evite. Maybe we. I could put it on. Your post oh, or something. yes, I don't I'll know. Put, I'll yes. figure out how to, how to get yeah, it, but put there's it in an invitation. There, it, yeah. 7 o'clock, if you come, and there's seats, we're welcome, happy to have you. Now, just to be clear, this is a test screen. Thank you, that's where I was going. So this is not the finished movie. Okay. So when we make a film, we cut it, and we have very rough sound, because we haven't put the big, beautiful score in. We haven't gone in and sound mixed and put all the background sounds in. We haven't even gone in and colored it yet and made sure that the color and the grading is beautiful. We have a very rough story in terms of how we've edited it. And what we do is we sit down with an audience who know very little about the film, and we gauge what did they think about the characters? Did they follow the story? Were there any bumps? And so tomorrow night is our opportunity to sit down with 50 people, and for them to have this sneak preview of a film that isn't finished Does this happen yet, on every movie? We do this on a lot of movies. Big so movies will always do it in Hollywood. Wow. Yeah, you will, you will, like if you walk down Hollywood Boulevard on any given day, there's somebody handing out tickets because we want to know. We, want, we are so in a bubble after 17 years of loving this project. I think it's awesome, but I think my baby's awesome. Like right. any baby is, <laughs> my baby. Our, right. our babies are awesome. They are, meaning in, you know, but right. you know, like, you know. So we want that feedback, and so uh, uh, they'll come in, they'll watch the film, they'll have to excuse some dodgy sound and what He has you. ADR, which is a voiceover track, so you'll hear his voice sometimes trying to have an English ac American accent, Hilarious. Trying. So, so all of a sudden you'll be watching and you'll hear Richard Jane say, I heard your music, it was really good. I can't even fake a fake American <laughs> accent. But it, was, you know, but it was really, really good. Because then th those things will tell us whether the story's working or not and then we'll get the actors in to record those extra lines. But if it's not working and then the audience says, out. I'm still stuck on this even though I heard that line, we might have to rewrite mm -hmm. it and then get the actors in later. Mm -hmm. So we'll do that 
We'll then have another week or two in the cutting room, cutting the picture and getting it settled. Once we have that, it goes off to the composer. The composer has a couple of months, uh, three months to work on the composing. It goes off to a sound designer. The sound designer starts working on it. It goes off to Foley. So if you think our whole movie has to play with every bit of sound apart from them speaking, because when they pick up their cup and when they do this, all those noises have to be recorded in a studio afterwards so that when this gets dubbed in French and in German, all the natural sound effects are there. So we have a whole team that go and do all that sound and then they go and color. So we're probably about three, four months away from having a complete Well, we would love film. to see it in Sundance, would be January, but that, that would be probably if, when, first public screening outside of a premiere we do here, which everybody will know about, I promise. You just explained mm -hmm. to me and my wife, I hope she's watching, why it cost $60 last time we went to the movies. <laughs> yes, thank you for going, yeah. We need more people to go yes, to the movie theater, yeah, yeah, we yeah. really do. But when you think about it, you've got an entire workforce. We're spending a huge amount of money. There's a huge amount of employment. Um, and so when you go and support film, and especially independent film, you're supporting a lot of people feeding their families. Well, and talk about talk about that. Talk about how this film, doing this film in Oklahoma, in Oklahoma City, how that benefits Oklahoma. Absolutely, go ahead, do you want, you want to start? I mean, the thing go I on, think I'm, the thing I am, think I am the most proud of, we, we're able to get, I would say, 80% of our heads of department out of the state of Oklahoma, meaning, or they were expats, or we're convincing some of them to move here. Mm -hmm. But that is really important to Richard and I, is to be able to make sure that we are developing a really solid workforce so that when the bigger films come in, they don't feel like they have to call in the Los Angeles folks. They feel like, oh, well, look, you know, we have an Oscar-winning film that was shot up in Tulsa. I mean, Minari is a lot mm. of Oklahoma filmmakers, mm. but when you say Oklahoma in New York or LA, they're not going to pick films Oklahoma. There? Why right, would you right, film? right. Who's now that's changing. That's changing. It's ch and it's changing pretty quickly uh, in terms of the amount of films that are looking to shoot in this state at the moment. Uh, but we need to develop that that crew base, and we need crew depth so we can shoot multiple at the same mm. time. So that's where films like this really come into. When you've got that one point two million dollar budget, you can employ an awful lot of local people, both in terms of in front of the camera and behind the yes. camera. Um, and when you look at Ofta, here we go. I have the mug. Uh, the Oklahoma uh, Film and TV Academy, we're then training those people, and then we're putting to, them to work on on the films that we have so that then they have that experience to then go and work on third party movies that they come in, or things like Tulsa King, or Killers of the Flower Moon, all these massive projects that come in. We have then students going off because they've had those initial experiences with us and going and working on those big films. So it's a lot of employment, a huge amount. Fun fact, I would say probably at minimum 50, maybe closer, I would say minimum 50 of our students either went to school here at Green Pastures had a parent that went to school here or a grandparent. So we have been able to really also get a lot of the local families involved right. in and um, trained up and trained out into the, to the film world. And that's always the coolest when they come in here and they're getting ready for class and they're looking around like, are you kidding me? This is where I went to school. Yeah, it's, it's I've awesome. had some guests here that, that, that had that experience when we it's filmed cool, here. It's cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's cool. So tell me what's happening in Oklahoma as far as the film industry. How what what's happening now? Is it what's what? There's other stage. I know there's another. Yeah, we've got Prairie Surf downtown, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, you've got Matt and Rachel who run that big big sound stages. So you've got King of Tulsa in there at the moment with Sylvester Stallone. They mm -hmm. actually finished shooting today. Mm -hmm. I think it was 122 days that that TV show shot. So that'll be coming out in November. So look out for Oklahoma on Paramount Plus. <laughs> There'll be a lot of Oklahoma. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, huge amount. And then uh, you've got another stage up uh, with the Cherokee Film, uh, film Office uh, that is a very, very high-tech uh, uh, stage with all these big screens behind it. It's beautiful. There aren't many stages like that in the country. The Unreal Engine. The, with using the Unreal Engine technology mm -hmm. to power <coughs> those screens. Mm. Um, so we're at a stage at the moment where the film industry in general is... Um, we had the, an incentive increased uh, two years ago by legislators that gave $30 million a year in rebates to films coming and shooting here. 
And they do that because there's a great economic return to the state. For every dollar the state puts in in that rebate, it creates an economic activity of $17. So I don't know about you, but if someone gave, gave you a, a dollar and, uh, and you were able to give them back $17, they'd be giving you a lot of dollars. Yes, yes, right. Mm -hmm. So we're at that stage now where so many films want to come and shoot here. We're training our workforce that we are just about to become one of the major, major players in all of America in terms of feature film production and TV shows. You look, we've got Reservation Dogs, which is on its second season. It's got to be picked up for its third season. If you haven't seen Reservation Dogs, you've got to check it out. It's brilliant. It is Oklahoman. It is Oklahoma crew. Um, and it's a real testament to what is available here. But we're talking about millions and millions and millions of dollars flooding into Oklahoma being spent on employment, being spent on crazy things. Whatever like we need. Furniture. Yeah, whatever right? we need. All yeah. of this you see in here was went and bought, and we don't buy all this new. We go to antique stores and buy it, right? Yeah. We go and we buy it on Facebook Marketplace. Probably most of this stuff is Facebook Marketplace. So anyone who's watching, if you've sold something on Facebook Marketplace, <laughs> it, it might be in one of our movies. Yeah. Yeah. Or in the props room. Um, so I don't know if you I don't know if you got this table from Marketplace or you got this out of my mother's garage. Yes, exactly. Yeah, this, this is ex <laughs> yes. this, this like, is how yeah. you see that's yeah. it, right? Right. Yeah. right? We actually had to buy three of these. And the reason for that is because I have a shot where the camera is in the middle moving around everyone. So often we buy multiple of the, these sort of tables and chairs and what have you as well. So we're at a stage in Oklahoma at the moment whereby the industry is booming. We had 56 movies want to shoot here and TV shows want to shoot here in June. Mm. We could only allow six of them to come and shoot. Wow. Well, and more could come and shoot, without a doubt. As many can come and shoot here, but that was all that the rebate is available. Right. So, so we're working as an industry together to say, look, we know we can support this slowly but surely, right? We don't want to flood mm -hmm. the engine. But um, so we're working very hard to, to make sure that people recognize that this is a real industry. This industry pays really good money to people. And, and, and can make a difference. More important, I always go back to the karma, he always goes back to the money, but the karma for me here is that this is an opportunity for the middle of the country to tell their stories, right? Not have the coasts kind of monopolize how, what might look like to tell a story here in, what it does it look like to grow up, like we were driving up here today in Spencer and two young boys on their horses which is I saw them. Yes, right? I saw them. And I was like, this is amazing. But unless you live here, you can't you can't write that. So this is an opportunity for I think storytelling to become important and valuable and valued across to the back to the yeah. coast. So that gives me to, that. To, to the to the next question is how do we get trained in this industry? So you have the Oklahoma TV and Film yep. Academy. Talk about that a little bit and then tell us how we get there. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna, um, yes, the Oklahoma Film and Television Academy is, is a four day program. Um, if you're viewing us in Tulsa, I'm not sure which camera's looking at me. We have a, a <laughs> class, it's for Tulsa residents, it's a free class. Um, the last two weekends in October, you just give us a call here at the office and we can set that up. That is thanks to the um, Tulsa, Tulsa Film, and Film Music Office. M Muse mm -hmm. Arts and Culture Office. So that is one option. Um, it's a four day, for two weekends class and you come out of there ready to go to set as a PA. What makes, I think, the Academy special is that you already came to me with skill set. You already have done X, Y, and Z. You, even at 18, I can find a skill set. If you've been a Domino's driver, I can help you find a job in the film industry. All I'm teaching you is the etiquette and the basic structure so that you don't walk onto that set and, and fail. We set you up, I mean, you might still, but we'll get you back up and we'll put you back out. Right. <laughs> but, so that is one option. And it's really, like I said, we had 18 really is our youngest. We had a gentleman from Dallas come up who was 80. He works in um, theater more, but really was interested in learning the industry. Drove up from Dallas, came up here to spend that time with us and everything in between. Jobs, mm -hmm. every job in between. What's really awesome is that not only is that happening, but for instance, OCCC just got top 100 film schools or 26? It was, yeah, it was high up. It was a very, I think top 26, if not higher, film schools in the country. Mm. It is a phenomenal program that was set up by Gray Fredrickson, who is an incredible producer, and it's finally getting 
the recognition it deserves. What does it cost me to come to this school? What's the this tuition? School, um, the, well, I would say majority of our students are scholarshiped in, so we work really hard to be able to do that. And it depends on the course. I mean, it If you're varies. looking at uh, the Set Ready course, it's 1200 bucks. Uh, we find that a lot of the students will leave here and within four to six weeks will start working in the industry, only about 150 to 200 a day. Uh, so you know you can pay Payback's that off very quick. quickly, and we can spread payments and all that mm -hmm. sort of we stuff. Work, yeah. And then if if you if you're working really well and you're loving it, and you're deciding you want to start to go and specialize in grip and electric, or you want to go into accounting. We need accountants at the moment, but you don't have to have an accountant's degree. Just if you like spreadsheets, we can use you we as an accountant. You. <laughs> right. We got and you. So That's you can not come me. Back. No, no, me either. <laughs> you can come and do another four-day course uh, where we teach you about the specifics of that department. Um, and those range from another 1,200 to 2,000, depending on what sort of equipment we have to bring in to train you. But again, a lot of those people, a lot of the people doing the grip and electric courses, they're going off and they just did eight months on Killers of the Flower Moon. They're now in the union. They're earning union rates. They're getting pension. They're getting health. And here's the great thing. As a film industry, we don't worry whether you graduated high school. Nope. We, we don't, don't worry if you're a felon. We don't worry about criminal records. If you are a upstanding human being who wants to work hard, there is a job for and you in the And show up industry. every day. That's the key. And, and, but what, and on know, time. And I on time. time. There's a lot of time going on. That's yeah, it. Yeah, all a lot of time. Time. Yeah. Well, when you think how much money we're spending an hour to shoot, if you're 15 minutes late, yep. it causes massive problems. And as I say, and if there's anyone from the Oklahoma Film and Television class that's ever been in there, they know that every 10 minutes I shout, time is... And money. they all shout money. Because uh. on a film set, we burn so much money every hour that you can't be late. You've got to show up. But it's also long hours, right? right? You can be doing 14, yeah, 15, 16 That's hours. for sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think Sylvester Stallone just said, I think uh, if he had ever ended up in hell, uh, the heat of Oklahoma in the summer may have Why set him up for that. that? Yeah. Why would you do that? Quote? Because I thought that was rather funny. No, he's hot. I love it was, it was, it was hot. He was sort of, this is so hot. Uh, but also then we get the cold, and you might be out through all of that. It's a tough job, but I tell you what, I wouldn't do anything else. It's so much fun. It's the best misfits I've ever met in my life. We're all a bunch of crazy misfits, and like you, you get on set and you're like, oh, I belong here. Yeah. It might be the first time I ever felt like I belong. I can tell you all love it. Yeah. Uh, you wouldn't have done all of this if you, if you didn't. Mm -hmm. um, what's next? What's Ooh. next? Or do you just, do you have to wrap up cricket? No, I mean we have before you do. What, what is next is 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 like if we look at the long term bubble. What is next is to ensure that the state has a healthy industry. I mean, from a from a financial from a business perspective, we are working. Richard is working, spending tons of hours with a lot of really intelligent people in the industry to help make sure that happens. For us, we have. Our fa well, another one of our favorites we finally get to do. Um, I don't know, are we able to, well, we have another script in the works. Okay. And it is a fabulous script. And it, it um, one of my joys is that the leading actor in the script has cerebral palsy. So we are on a hunt for a young man, 16 to 18, with acting dreams, who has cerebral palsy. And we are willing to train and get that get that happening for us. But put it out there, it's gonna happen. Please, because it's, one, it of, it's, there, it's one, one of happen. the most Wonderful scripts. It's beautiful, and it's based on a book that's taught in a lot of schools, so it has this great backing behind it, and it's mm -hmm. just, it's beautiful. It really is, and it's gonna be perfect for shooting here in Oklahoma. Good yeah. deal, good deal. I wanna thank y'all for sharing your world, sharing your heart, your passion. Ah! I cannot wait to see Cricket. Ah, uh, I cannot, I cannot wait. wait. I'm a little nervous about what I look like in that. You're it's fantastic. Very, it's hey, a very yeah, dramatic know. scene. A All of us are in tears by that point, so it's oh, great. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, well, we'll see it. So that's tomorrow night. Give us the information about how to get connected tomorrow night one more time. Okay, so I think the easiest way will be to go onto Facebook, um, Green Pasture Studio. I'll make sure there's a link there. It's an Eventbrite link. You will have to sign up for an RSVP. However, if you do come tomorrow, um, we will do our best to find a seat. And you're going to fill out, we're gonna, you're going to yeah, ask questions? Fill out. So it's yeah. a 90 minute film, and I would say plan on staying an hour after. We we'll okay. have a chap called David asking everyone lots of questions about what do they think about no this food, character? No now. food in one of these kind of deals? There's definitely popcorn there. There's definitely, definitely popcorn. That's, oh, yeah. all, that's all that's yeah, required. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. all that's required. And some expensive M&Ms. Yes, that's I'm all, sure that's, 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 that's it. Too, yeah. <laughs> that's it, you all. Thank you so much for joining me. And thanks. And come check out Green Pasture Studios and all the work they're doing. I love them. I love this. The movie is cricket. Look for it uh, when it comes out. 
Uh, and we need 50 people to review it, so make it the best it can possibly be tomorrow night. Yeah, That's it for Conversation with Q. We'll see you here next week.